Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. How's everybody getting along? I am coming off my vacation, so I should be resuming the normal video schedule throughout the week here. But let's get into it. I needed to get this video update out because things are changing in the Atlantic. Let's get into it. All right, so the big story here we're going to be watching in this video segment is this system here coming off the Cape Verde Islands, the coast of Africa. A very vigorous tropical wave. Could this become Tropical Storm Danielle? in the next five to eight days here. We're looking in the August 9th, August 18th time frame here. Definitely looking at nearly a 50% chance. The big question is though, does it hold together? And if it does, does it get drawn up along the US East Coast in a potential trough situation? Getting trained tropical moisture into Eastern New England? Or does it continue westward? towards the Gulf of Mexico. Let's take a look. And here we go. There is that development area. We're looking at a 40% chance through day five here. So watching, it's not this system that we're watching here. It's going to be this system. This is a much more uh, structured system here, and that's going to be heading west in the next five to six days here. All right, as you can see here in the Eastern Pacific, this is likely to become Tropical Storm Howard, another system that could affect Hawaii here. This is a 20 to 30 percent chance of development over the next five days, and I'll show you that. And you can see here off the coast of western Mexico, we have some shower and thunderstorm activity. The system likely to maintain, you know, a tropical storm status once it becomes a tropical storm. All right, so the two areas we're watching here, Tropical Depression 9 likely to become Howard. We got this system out here, southeast of Hawaii, which could impact Hawaii. And there is our system coming off, you know, just south of the Cape Verdes. We're going to be watching these three systems, and let's take a look here. So as we go in time, let's see what the, you know, the overall modeling does with these systems. So you can see pretty much Tropical Depression 9 probably by this point. This is Monday, 2 a.m., becoming Howard, you know, it's close proximity to the Mexican coast. We'll keep showers moving in to places like Puerto Varata, but this, for the most part, is going to remain offshore and a weaker tropical storm. Now, the system here into the Atlantic. This is where things get a little bit interesting, because as we go in time, you can see it really starts to get its act together here. This is by Monday, 11 p.m. You see it here, just southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. And the taller thunderstorm cloud tops here signifying that this system could be something that could eventually become Tropical Storm Danielle. And you can see here potential Howard taking on quite an interesting look here. It almost looks like a minimal hurricane, but it will be heading over cooler water. So yes, it will have a small structure by this point spinning some showers and thunderstorms here into Cabo San Lucas. And here is that area of concern here southeast of the Hawaiian Islands. It is a big old conglomeration here. Uh, so by m later Monday, we'll be watching for that. And we do have a few other systems out here into the western Pacific. We're going to watch some of these because watch in time. We will have some typhoons out here developing. So let's take a look as we go in time here. What is going to happen with this Atlantic system as we head towards Wednesday morning? Here it is. Look at this. So we have a lot of showers and thunderstorm activity. It could potentially, I don't think it'll be depression by then, but it's possible. It's taking on a lot of, you know, moisture here from the intertropical conversion zone. And as we head to the Pacific here, this system potentially Howard by this point heading out into the cooler waters. But look at this. South of the Hawaiian Islands here by Wednesday. We're looking at a big old mess here, likely getting its act together and potentially becoming a tropical depression by this point. And you see the Western Pacific here still a little bit quiet, but we're going to continue to watch because as we head throughout time, I expect things to get a bit active. Now we'll watch the activity kind of wane a bit here in the Eastern Pacific, and that should allow us to get things cranking here into the Atlantic. Now take a look at this. This is by Thursday, August 11th at 11 a.m. Look at this. We have a batch of showers and thunderstorms. If that persists, that would be something we'd keep an eye on. Um, at this point, I don't think it's anything to worry too much about here in the short term, but look at this system here in the Atlantic likely becoming you know, much better organized here by Thursday. And let's take a look as we head out through Friday here. Yeah, it's uh, it could potentially be our next system, next name system, or tropical depression, you know, by this point. So it's quite possible, but you see what's happening here along the U.S. East Coast. This is kind of a trough that's going to be pivoting. So if this system becomes a player, will it be picked up by this trough? It's most likely because 
you know, some of the models take it more westward, but a lot of them are recurving, and it'll be interesting to see how close that gets to the U.S. East Coast. Now, the intertropical convergence zone, you can see, is not quieting down anytime soon here into the eastern Pacific. And look at this system towards Hawaii. Let's just back this up a few frames. Look at this. So, yeah, this is going to be coming very, very close to Hawaii here. You can see the Hawaiian island chain. We're going to keep an eye on this because this could become quite a formidable system, at least at the very least, providing a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity, much more than you're used to here in the Hawaiian Islands. And as we go in time here, take a look at that. It does kind of skim on by, at least the GFS indicating that. And we have some other systems potentially here to watch, you know, towards China. Nothing really towards Japan here, but we'll have to watch some of these systems as they kick up. I don't see any additional here into the Eastern Pacific. We'll have to watch some of these waves. But here's that system here into the Atlantic. Take a look at this. So, yeah, it's kind of heading a bit north at this point of the Caribbean Islands. And that seems to be the trend here. And let's kick it on through time here. What starts to happen with this system? This is Saturday, August 13th. You can see there it is. It's kind of washing out here. This is what's left of it. So it tries to hold on a bit here. Let's see what the GFS here does with it in time here. Take a look at this. Yeah, it's uh, whatever energy's left of it or it's holding on to here, it does make it here off the U.S. East Coast. But you can see by this point, here is the trough. So this, what's ever left of the system, or if it's still a system, because this is pretty far out, this is Tuesday, August 16th, a lot can change between now and then. You could be looking at something just off the U.S. East Coast here. And of course, here into the Eastern Pacific, we're watching a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity that might develop into something here off the Western Mexican coastline. Hawaiian Islands clearing out, but look what's left of eventually clearing Hawaii. It's out here into the western Atlantic. So, yeah, we're going to be watching that. And a few other tropical waves just east of the Philippines here. So, and look at this. Eastern Pacific, a lot of wave action here as well. So, let's continue in time here. You can see the modeling does take whatever is left of this tropical system up along and out to sea along the east coast. But a lot can change. You can see another front moving down by this time. Uh, Wednesday, August 17th. So the pattern is definitely changing here along the U.S. East Coast. And you can see another tropical wave coming off the Cape Verde Islands here. So definitely looking a bit more active here. Also watching another tropical wave here in the Caribbean. And look at this. Right off the western Mexican coastline here, we are watching another potential system that could be developing. And this one is right along, just northwest of Acapulco southeast of Puerto Vallarta here. So we'll continue to watch it here. Things are going to be really heating up here in the Western Pacific as well. Look at this. We have this system in time. Look at this. So we have this system just east of the Philippines. Look at this. This is a big old her a typhoon at this point. Uh, here's the coast of Japan. So it is well away from Japan by this point. But definitely going to keep an eye on it here in the middle of the Pacific. And look at this as we head in time. Southern Gulf of Mexico, that system heading northwest. Will this become a Gulf of Mexico player here? And look at this. Tropical moisture, whatever's left of the system, feeding up into eastern New England. Yeah, stay tuned. It could get rather interesting here. So, and then look at this. Intertropical convergence zone continuing to remain very robust and active here. And as we head throughout time, you can see... Things are changing, Eastern Pacific becoming quieter, and the Atlantic becoming much more active. And look out here into the Western Pacific, potential typhoons just east of the Philippines, and the big one here just east of Japan. All right, so let's take a look what the Euro does with this system here in the Atlantic. So as we head through, this is Monday, August 8th, Tuesday, August 9th. It's always good to get to see what the euro does with these systems. Now, this is really interesting because the euro is keeping this system a bit far to the south here. High pressure retreating to the northeast. There's that trough, the positioning of the trough, very similar on the GFS as it is on the euro. And as we head throughout time, there it is. It kind of loses its punch here. There's some wind shear. 
dry you know, air at mid-level. So that could potentially do a number on this system. What does the euro do? The euro at this point looks like it keeps it as a weak open wave by that point and further to the south. All right, so the Eastern Pacific, it looks like it would become at this point Howard. This is Monday, August 8th. There it is off the coast of Cabo San Lucas. And there's that next system that potentially we're looking at Hawaii. I will show you. I'll be moving the map a little bit to the left here. But as we head throughout time, one thing to note is just like the GFS indicated here, yes, we do have another weak system potential here uh, by about Sunday, August 14th, but you notice the lack of activity as we continue through mid-August. This would allow the Atlantic to become alive. All right, so as we head throughout the middle of the Pacific here, here's the Hawaiian Island chain right in the center here. Now, here's that system here to the southeast, and there is another system showing up here on the Euro. Watch as we go out throughout time here. Let's see how these would affect the Hawaiian Islands. This is uh, Thursday, August 11th. There it is, Friday, August 12th, Thursday, August 13th. So, system becomes very close to the Hawaiian Islands here, but it weakens here on the Euro. Here's another potential system. And as we go throughout time here, the Euro is keeping these systems weak and further to the south. All right, so here we go. We're going to look at the upper-level pattern, see if things are going to break here across the east for the heat, and see if we're going to see any more, you know, any advanced tropical uh, readjustment here. You know, we head into Thursday. This is Thursday, August 11th, so we start to see... Look at this. This is going to be the big heat breaker here across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and eventually the Northeast here as this pivots to the east. We do have that ridge developing out west here, but look at this. Watch this as we go into the weekend. Ooh, refreshing. Look at this. This is by Friday, August 12th. Look at that beautiful trough. Now, normally you don't like to see troughs because it usually means inclement weather, but look at Saturday, uh, August 13th here. Look at that. It sticks around into early next week. Look at that. Beautiful to be had. All right, so we're going to see any large-scale areas of very inclement weather here it's throughout the week. Well, the jet stream remains pretty far to the north initially here, so most of this severe weather will be bottled up here into Canada starting off Monday. Now, we could have some, you know, thunderstorms in the upper Midwest here and parts of northern New England, but, you know, as we head in time here, look at this. It's Tuesday, August 10th, Wednesday, Wednesday, August 10th. And then look at that, Thursday, August 11th, there is that trough. So we could see some pretty inclement weather, you know, on the base of this trough. But look at this, as this pivots to the northeast, this is where we're going to see the big cool down action. And it kind of cuts off and remains nice temperature wise. So, you know, conditions are going to be calming down a bit. But the one interesting thing to note is this sticks around next week. Do we have that tropical system come into the picture? It will likely be deflected here to the north. All right, so we do have some strong thunderstorms here in parts of the Midwest. This is starting at midnight, uh, Sunday night, heading into early Monday morning. But, you know, for the most part here across the northeast, look at this. We're kind of calming things down. We're losing the daytime heating, all that hazy, hot, and humid conditions. So let's continue as we head throughout your Monday. Let's see if any large-scale areas or even mesoscale systems. Now you can see by later in the day, this is Monday at 1 p.m., we're starting to get some shower and thunderstorm activity in the eastern Ohio parts of northwestern Pennsylvania, western New York. So we'll watch out for some, maybe some gully washers here. But for most of the northeast, you will be baking into your Monday here. And as we continue in time, yep, by 5 p.m., your afternoon rush, we do get some shower and thunderstorm activity here just northwest of Harrisburg up to Binghamton, Williamsport, Syracuse, Utica area up into the Adirondack. So we'll watch for that. And as we continue in time here, let's take a look and see if we have any areas of concern. That heads through the Catskills, Hudson Valley. This is by 10 p.m. Monday night. And look at this. The cold front starts approaching. This is Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. Look at that. So we start to get, you know, kind of a push here. You can kind of see the cold front literally dropping in through parts of northern Ohio, upstate New York, and these areas. And we start to get more increased shower and thunderstorm activity during your day on Tuesday here. There it is. This is by 10 a.m. Tuesday. And I wanted to show you the NAM 3 kilometer because it does increase activity beyond what the uh, HRRR model does here on Monday afternoon. You see 4 p.m. just before you're getting out of work here. Shower and thunderstorm activity here increasing across western New York, western Pennsylvania. 
only maybe an isolated severe. Some of these could become strong with hail and damaging winds, but for the most part, the heavy rain is going to be the big story. You can see lining up across the Susquehanna River Valley by 6 p.m. on Monday evening here up to Syracuse. And let's kick it on into, look at that, showers and thunderstorms across the Catskills, Poconos. This is 9 p.m., so this is a few hours earlier than the HRRR model. But for the most part, these should be some beneficial rain here. Look what's going on here. This is the cold front. It's showing a bit more active here along the NAM 3 kilometer than it was on the HRRR. So let's take a look as we head throughout your Tuesday. Look at that, 6 a.m. You lose all that daytime heating, but look at this. We start to have, this is by noon, so we could, towards the Binghamton area, Elmira, we could have some of these flare up into shower and thunderstorm activity. Some of these could be strong, wind gusts to 40 miles per hour, pea-sized hail potential. So as we head throughout time here, the rest of your Tuesday, that kind of fills in by 5 p.m. Your commute, look at this, places like Harrisburg, up to Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Catskills, Poconos, Hudson Valley. Some of these could contain damaging wind, large hail. So we're going to watch out for that pot potential here. And as we head throughout the rest of your Tuesday evening, look at that. The lower Hudson Valley, the Catskills, this is by 7 p.m. Look where it's getting into, the lower Hudson Valley. And we're even getting strong thunderstorms up here into Massachusetts, the Boston area, and then down in through parts of Washington, D.C. And the last frame here, Shows it bearing down on New Jersey. So here we go. Total precipitation QPF here. What are we looking at here? This is through Tuesday into Wednesday. Take a look at this. So you see drought-ridden parts of the Northeast. You're not getting the rain you need. You are in northern New England there, like northern part of Maine, where you're getting up towards two and a half, three inches of rain. But let's zoom in here towards the Northeast, and we'll see exactly... How much rain here we're looking at. So taking a look at the high resolution Euro here. This is through Wednesday afternoon. You can see parts of the northeast getting and then into Thursday morning. You can see uh, this is interesting. So we're getting some shower and thunderstorm activity into parts of New Jersey. Some beneficial rains here into southeastern New England as well. But you notice kind of a shadow here, a hole that's been happening a lot here in interior sections. This is a pivot point from State College. Williamsport up to Binghamton, Elmira, Cortland, Utica, Albany. Look at this, almost no rain. And then into down east Maine. This has been a problem, and this is going to intensify the drought into the northeast. Now you're getting, there's all that rain there into northern part of Maine. So definitely getting on some beneficial rains and here into the Ohio Valley as well. All right, so the big story here, look at this heat across the east. Yep, look at this 70 degree air here in the upper Midwest. Watch as we go from Monday to Tuesday here. Actually, those are overnight lows. Here we go. So, here we go. Tuesday, look at this. Look at these below 80 in much of the lakes, the Midwest and the Northeast. We do have heat rebuilt, you know, rebounding here in the Northern Plains. Um, but at least we'll get, you know, a reprieve here into the Northeast. So, let's see if we go throughout the rest of the week. Things are going to get much better here. Upper Midwest, another shot. And look at that. Anywhere north of that line is generally here into the 70s. So this is really nice. We're still boiling the heat across the southeast and the plains for that matter. But we get into Thursday here. Look at this. Another reinforcing shot of cooler air into the 70s here north of that line. And look at this. Are we setting up for a picture-perfect weekend here in the Northeast? Well, I sure hope so because look at this. We head into Saturday and look at these 70s mainly in this region here into the northeast. Extended outlook for my hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley. Look at this. Yeah, we're going to see a declining trend in temperatures. This is much welcome. 93 on Monday, all the way down to 76 by Friday. And everything in between in the 80s, we'll see a cold front come through later Tuesday into early Wednesday. We will have some rounds of showers and thunderstorms, maybe some isolated severe. But, you know, the big story is going to be the fact that we're going to be breaking the heat. So maybe some of these gully washers, but we're not going to see any widespread rain really to put a dent in any of the drought whatsoever. Thanks for joining me, watching. Don't forget to share, smash the like button. Question or comment down below. Let's keep the weather conversation going here. I love to read your questions or comments. Over on my social media pages, Media Mark on Facebook, also Weather Northeastern, Hurricane Northeastern, also uh, Susquehanna Weather, and you can visit me on Twitter at Weather Eastern. Thanks for joining me.